This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review, and it will help other excellent people just like you to be able to find this podcast. Thank you very much. I want to speak today about the subject of refocus. It seems to be something that we all are needing to do, a reset, a refocus, a reevaluation, trying to move ahead when uh, the last year for many people in the world was a year that everything that we had depended upon, all the things that we normally do, we could not do, and everything became a new normal or an abnormal salt. So how do we do that? I think you just need to give yourself some permission to breathe, some permission to say, yes, we have gone through a hard period of time, but so has everyone else. We're not being picked upon or we're not the only ones who've had a downturn and have had to really reevaluate everything that we're doing. A lot of people don't like words like reset and refocus, but but they're necessary. Life is not just one continual straight line up. It probably looks more like up and down over hills and down through the vales. It, it looks more zigzag than a straight line. There are, at times, we get off on certain tangents or because of where we are individually, or the organization that we have to kind of take a a bypass, as it will, to work on some things that are critically important for us in order to get farther down the road and to make progress. So it's okay to reset, but it shouldn't just be an automatic reset. Whether it's on my Kindle electronic reader or other pieces of electronics I have, Uh, My iPhone, for instance, when I I seemingly can't get it to work right, it seems to be a little bit haywire. There is a reset button that you can reset, start over, and it'll take you back to the last place when it pretty much stopped working. I'm not just talking about reset in that way, that we're going to reset everything and everything now is all of a sudden mystically and magically going to reappear like it used to be and that we'll be able to fall back into previous patterns and habits and previous ways of doing things. A reset is just really a time to reevaluate. What were we doing that really cannot be stopped? What are some things that in light of some new discoveries we've made that we may need to do somewhat differently or we are going to have to make some changes? That that also leads to the area of refocus. A lot of times when you go through some kind of a crisis, some uh, sort of mishap, problem, if you will, it, it helps us to refocus, to say, had we lost our focus a little bit? Were we suffering from mission drift? Were we not holding ourselves totally accountable? Were we doing all of the things that we said Uh, we were going to do. Now, when I'm talking about resetting and refocusing, I'm not talking about taking the next six months to one year to do that. Frankly, if it takes more than a month, you're probably spending too much time, in my opinion. You, You just need to refocus with the right mindset that can say, what are the host of opportunities that now present themselves that a year ago we knew nothing about? We, we need to take our foot off of the brake, kind of decelerate, and, and start to reimagine what will our organization look like? What will our family look like? What will my goals look like going into um, the future? We're going to talk about it in a moment, that this is not just a decision for you, leader. This is for you if you're leading your home to bring your family in, your friends, if it's a volunteer organization to bring the other volunteers together. If you lead a line or you lead a sales force or you're your own entrepreneur of your own company, it is a time to listen to others, to refocus, to hear them out, to share what we have all learned. Oftentimes, it'll overlap, of course. We have all learned a lot of the same lessons. But let me just say to you, whether you're doing this as a group effort, 
which you should do if you work in a team. But if you're a solopreneur and you're all there is, then obviously you'll need to do it with yourself. But I, you might consider your spouse or significant other or someone who's helping you. But here are some things I think that must go in to a reset, a refocus uh, of our organizations or of our own lives. The first thing is, what are some future skills that I need to get prepared for? We know that you are skilled enough to get yourself, your family, your organization to where you are today. It's obvious you're there. But if you want to take your family, yourself, your organization somewhere different in the future, then what are some skills that you're going to need to acquire? What's some information that you're going to need to learn? What what do you need to do? And so a lot of times the refocusing or the resetting is we're going to we're going to do whatever we can do to get back to how it used to be. I want you to not think about that so much right now. I'm wanting you to ask yourself in light of all that has just transpired, what are some skills that I discovered are somewhat lacking in my life? Are there some new skill acquisitions that I need to make in order to be the very best leader? How about our organization? Are there some holes in our training and our learning or even how we look at the world? One of the things that we try to do, that I try to do in my normal schedule, but a, a time of resetting and refocusing really brings this into bold relief, and that is a fact. Are you creating consistent space in your life for reflection? Are you reflecting on where we are, where we have been, where we believe we need to, to go? What do we need to learn? What do we need to know? What do we need to acquire? How... Are all of us that are here today, are we going, are we capable and are we willing to help move things forward? I, I think one of the critical things that happens oftentimes in leaders is that they're so busy going to meetings and dreaming and scheming and planning, all necessary, do not hear me saying it's unnecessary, that we really don't spend the time in reflected learning, reflecting on how did that work out? How did the, the board meeting, the committee meeting go? Did we actually accomplish what we intended to and what we set out to? Or have we learned some unintended consequences that we, we did not foresee and that we need to adjust to? So I, I, I'm just sort of begging you, I guess, as it were, make sure that you put regular time in your schedule for you to do some reflecting. I think in this time of resetting and refocusing, one needs to talk about what is the new normal or the next normal. We all talk about going back to normal. That's probably not going to happen. For instance, many of us were a physical presence with a, with a digital outreach, a digital kind of a component. I'm wondering if all of this that we haven't learned, maybe we ought to shape it to say we really are a digital organization with a physical footprint. And I'm wondering if just that shift alone might change the way we look at space and that we don't see space that we can't see, i.e. the internet or online, as being second or third class, but maybe really is at the heart of our organization and we may need to... Um, we may need to make sure that we have the proper resources to capture that particular part. Maybe the next normal means we need to hire someone. Maybe the next normal means there are some things that we are absolutely going to have to let go of. There are some things that we've been holding on to because we're comfortable with it, we like it, but it is not appreciably assisting us in the mission at all. It could be just something we're doing. I think in a time of refocus and resetting, and again, I, I've told you, you don't have years and many weeks and months to go with this. It needs to be a little more short term. I, I think it's a time for observing. Are the people on your team rattled? Are the people on your team hopeful? Are your people, are the people on your team, and even in your family, are they just worn out? Do they need a break? Do they need some encouragement from the leader to say, we are going to make it. Yes, there will be things that will need to be changed, but together we're going to be better, we're going to be stronger, and we're going to move forward. Just observe how people are responding to all that's going around. 
around them. And right now in the area of refocus and uh, resetting, I'm, I think it's a good time for you as the leader to begin to ask questions. Ask them not just organizationally, as important as that is and necessary as that is, but ask them how they're doing. Begin to take the pulse of the individuals, your team, your organization, but ask them because no one of us is as smart as all of us and we really do need a team effort. And perhaps there are some things that even with your being the reflective leader that you you haven't noticed and it's a good time to ask to just say, what have you noticed? Have you seen things that we need to change? Have you seen some of the things that we've had to implement on the fly in the last year? Are there some of those that just really need to be incorporated into the heart of what we do? Uh, You need to create the safe environment leader by asking open-ended questions and then being patient and methodical enough to listen and then not to just uh, throw them aside or cast aspersions or to say, I know better, because everyone, you need to hear everyone out. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a perspective. And as the leader, one of the important things is you're going to learn things a lot of times from places where you may least expect it. I used to say to people, I learned something every week, even from talking to four-year-olds in the hallway. It's amazing how much you can learn if you have an openness to learn. I think this is also a time in resetting and refocusing of just acknowledging the debt of appreciation and gratitude that you owe to the team who have, under very difficult circumstances, held things together, acknowledge their sacrifice, acknowledge in the facts of of an uncomfortable time where discomfort was the order of the day. They stepped up, stepped out, became, uh, took ownership of what was going on, and just acknowledge it. A, A reset and a refocus is also a marvelous time to begin to say, are there some things we need to mix up? Do we need to kind of, maybe this time of uncertainty is a time for us to mix things up a little bit. Maybe some people would be better utilized if they were in another area or doing other things. I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you're going to make change, there's no better time to do that than during a time of resetting and uh, refocusing. It may be the fact that you have to confront some things in a time of refocus. Not just individuals. Oftentimes, whenever we use the word confronting, we think it means individuals. And of course, at times that is true. But it also means you may need to confront some biases of the organization. Maybe confront some methodologies that just flat out aren't working, regardless of how much love there is for them. They're just not doing what they need to do. I think whenever you're having these meetings, It's wonderful to have someone take notes and to document it, not to hold just to put names with everything, but to show the team that you are taking it seriously enough that what they have to say is important and valuable and not just to hear it in this moment of the meeting, but that we can document it to a certain point that we can reflect on it and really ruminate and and think upon it. I think it's at a time of refocus and resetting where we really need to say, here's what our expectations are um, as an organization. Now, I know leaders, many times we are desirous of changing the culture, and I've read all the studies, as have you, that it's all over the board of how long it takes to do that. Is it two years, six years, three years, 10 years? And it, it can be any of those. But what I have discovered is if I want the culture to change, if I want my team to change, I don't so much focus on how I can change the culture and how I can change the team. I have to focus on how do I need to change. And if you change the leader, you will change the organization. If you change the way you perceive things, if you change the way you operate, I'm not saying that anything you're doing now is wrong or bad or don't do it anymore. But I'm saying we can get so focused on making sure everyone else measures up and everyone else gets it and everyone else makes the changes. You should be out in the forefront even telling people and announcing, here are some changes I'm going to have to make in the way that I operate and the way that I do things. You, can, the Leader, the only thing you really have control over is yourself. I think at the time of resetting and refocusing is a time 
to make sure that we really put our effort in onto those things that are important and the goals and the mission of the organization that are important. There's no better time than right now to say, here are the two or three things we really value. Here are the two or three things that are our goal. Let's focus on them. And as we're talking about refocus, I believe at the end of the day, here are the, here are the areas you really need to focus. Focus on clarity. A calamity kind of does away with clarity. And so in the midst of all of the chaos that's been going on, it's time for us to get together and as a team begin to really focus on clarity. What is crucial? What's important? I think it's good to focus on the relationships. Regardless of what kind of an organization you're a part of, relationships are the real gold. Together we're going to get a whole lot more accomplished than any one of us could accomplish by ourselves. So focus on relationships. There is always the tendency to want to focus on problems and irritants. I think the majority of our focus should be on solutions. It'll, be, it'll come quite easily that we discern what the problem is. Let's focus on the solutions. Let's also focus on candor and honesty. Let's not sugarcoat it. Let's not just be mean-spirited and cast aspersions. But let's really focus on let's be honest. We all know this isn't working. Let's just admit it. I think it's also a time when we're resetting and refocusing for a team to begin to focus on your strengths. What is it that we really, really do well? Oftentimes, individuals as well as teams try to focus on their weaknesses to make them better. You can only manage your weaknesses or bring somebody along who has strengths in your area of weaknesses to help you. You really do much better paying attention to your strengths and getting stronger. And I would say, finally, that you really need to focus on what the agreed goals are. Here's why we're here. Here's what we believe in. And here's what we're going to be working on into the future. I pray that you'll have a great time as you reset and refocus, whether it's yourself, your own goals, your family, or where you work. You have been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a rating, and a brief written review. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day. 